Victoria this year, so it's uh, quite a new project. Also, we had the pandemic, so some of the results that were planned, uh, were, we weren't able to, to uh, achieve them, so we had uh, to postpone some, some results. Uh, today, I will, um, today, I will uh, first uh, introduce our panelists. Uh, first things first, so my name is Marco Schatten, for those who maybe do not know me. I'm an associate professor at the Faculty of Organization Informatics and uh, the head of the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory and also the coordinator of uh, the project OHI for Games. Uh, today I will be joined by uh, four uh, panelists. Uh, first is Glenn Smith. Uh, uh, Glenn Gordon Smith is an associate professor in structural technology at the University of South Florida. Uh, his research focuses on combining web-based ebooks with computer games to promote literacy skills, recreational reading, and content le uh, learning. Uh, he has a US patent, numerous peer-reviewed publications and grants, uh, including one uh, including from the National Science uh, Foundation. And in a previous life, he worked in Hollywood, California, developing uh, computer graphics software to create television commercials and opening segments for television shows. Uh, then we have uh, Professor uh, Vicente Julian Inglada. Uh, he's a full professor and coordinator of the PhD program in the Technical University of Valencia. Uh, his research is focused on within the area of artificial intelligence, especially uh, multi-agent systems and development of platforms uh, and agent-based simulation. Uh, the third panelist is uh, Carlos Carascosa. Uh, he received his master's degree in computer science from the University uh, of the Polytechnic University of Valencia and his PhD from the uh, Departamento de Sistemas Informáticos e Computación, also of uh, the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, and is currently a lecturer involved in uh, teaching several. AI-related subjects at, at this uh, university, and his research uh, interests include multi-agent systems, social emotions, consensus in multi-agent systems, and real-time systems. And the fourth panelist is Jaime Andres Licon Arango. He is a postdoctoral uh, researcher in edge artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, robot assistance, and multi-agent systems at the uh, Universidad Politecnica de Valencia. Uh, uh, first, uh, oh, that was the wrong side. So let me uh, introduce you to uh, the actual project, OHI for Games. So uh, as the name states, it's orchestration of hybrid artificial intelligence methods for computer games. Uh, so the project is more or less uh, related to three uh, different areas. Uh, one are, of course, hybrid artificial intelligence methods or artificial intelligence, and uh, the second is computer games, and the third one is hidden behind this orchestration part. It's re related to cloud systems, microservice architectures, and, and similar. Uh, so first, uh, let me say a few words about any of these uh, any of these uh, components of the project. That what is this project about, and what are uh, the main main uh, uh, subject areas that are, are included in it. So, what is hybrid artificial intelligence? Uh, in recent years, we have seen a, a major we have major breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, especially in the field of machine learning, deep learning, and, and similar approaches. Uh, but also, uh, uh, this this part uh, is usually um, connected to statistic approaches to to artificial intelligence. There are also a lot of uh, different approaches, um, usually connected to some other uh, types of artificial intelligence, symbolic approaches related to uh, various types of expert systems of. Um, uh, multi agent systems uh, modeling, uh, uh, or knowledge modeling, knowledge representation, uh, ontologies, and similar. And in uh, recent years, we have seen that uh, combining these approaches uh, is gaining momentum. 
these approaches, usually called hybrid approaches. We have seen a lot of publications in uh, this in this area, and uh, they are uh, showing quite interesting results. And one of the main ideas of our uh, project is to actually try to create a platform that will allow us to combine various uh, artificial intelligence methods, uh, both symbolic and statistic, and use them in a special domain in, in, uh, in computer games. So uh, how to do such a thing? So in, in uh, uh, recent years, uh, microservice architectures, cloud infrastructure architect uh, architectures, we have seen uh, uh, that such uh, systems, uh, such complex distributed systems, uh, are uh, often used to uh, implement various uh, hybrid systems, systems that use uh, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, uh, uh, and data science, and so on. And it seems to us that uh, using an orchestration platform, so a, a platform that is able to orchestrate various services inside a, inside a, a cloud or, or a number of various servers and so on, as similar to uh, Docker images or, or uh, orchestration platforms like, like uh, Kubernetes or, or Docker Swarm and similar. Uh, we believe that uh, we can uh, approach such systems using a multi-agent system approach. Uh, since these systems are usually distributed, they are complex, they are uh, intelligent in various ways. And uh, our idea is to, to implement such, such uh, an approach, a multi-agent systems approach to, to uh, microservice architectures, especially for uh, computer games, since multi-agent systems provide us with, with the necessary methodology to, to approach such, such complex systems. Uh, in the end, uh, computer games has, have also advanced tremendously in the last few years. Uh, computer, the computer games industry is a, a multi-billion uh, euro uh, market. Uh, they are uh, uh, huge uh, uh, um, numbers of players playing various types of games, especially, for example, uh, games related to massive multiplayer online. Uh, but also uh, we have seen uh, a rise in game streaming, uh, in game streaming uh, uh, technologies. Uh, Stadia, for example, from Google is, is an example, but also a number of other uh, game streaming uh, uh, systems have been developed. Uh, additionally, games are not only um, for leisure or for, for fun, they are also uh, interesting in quite serious uh, environments, serious gaming being in uh, it's excellent design for uh, not only in in, in, uh, in uh, 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 teaching environments, but also uh, also in in uh, um, uh, uh, now the word I mean, you, that happens sometimes. You have a word, you know, it's on your tongue, but you cannot uh, uh, say it out. Uh, I don't know for for uh, military uh, uh, air force training and so on. We have a lot of games developed that uh, allow the training of pilots, of, of uh, officers and so on. And additionally, there is the field of gamification, which is also an interesting field, uh, which allows, which is actually more or less a motivation technique where we can uh, use various game elements inside more serious environments usually to motivate people to use some kind of system. Uh, gamification is mostly related to education, but it can also be used in, in various other fields. And we had some quite interesting experiences with gamification. So uh, computer games are uh, a very grateful application domain for hybrid uh, uh, artificial intelligence or orchestrated systems, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, Computer games have been connected since their, their uh, early beginnings, uh, from the first um, systems that tried to play tic-tac-toe or chess or, or something like that. Uh, there were always an application domain for artificial intelligence, but on the other hand, also computer games are usually uh, uh, are usually um, 
um, uh, evaluated if they have good artificial intelligence implemented for uh, for their uh, opponents or for generating procedures and content and so on. So, especially uh, as, as I already said, massive multiplayer online games are, are uh, a direct domain for orchestrated systems. If you have uh, some games, uh, 40,000 players uh, simultaneously online, you usually need quite an infrastructure in the background that is able to support uh, such, such a game. So uh, I believe that uh, or, uh, orchestrated systems or cloud systems are, are an excellent uh, way to build such systems. Um, so uh, to come to the main problem of uh, the OHI for Games project, uh, most approaches in uh, hybrid artificial intelligence as far as we have uh, uh, researched or, or we have made a, a quite intensive literature, literature review, uh, most approaches are ad hoc, so they are they are uh, usually made for the current problem at hand, and there is no no uh, profound methodology. So one of the main main ideas of the project is to actually de uh, define such a methodology, and we believe that multi-agent systems might be the, the right way to do that. Um, so where can we use uh, hybrid artificial intelligence in games? There are a lot of uh, possibilities, uh, for example, implementation of non-playing characters, NPCs, mobs or opponents, bots, which is the most obvious example, where we, where all the, there are various uh, um, approaches to implement such systems from uh, finite automata, decision, uh, behavior trees and decision trees and so on, automatic planning, stripes, algorithms and, and similar. Uh, but also uh, an interesting uh, uh, new development would be, uh, for example, deep fakes or, or various technology that allows us to uh, create uh, motion capture uh, on the fly with, with artificial intelligence methods, uh, usually deep learning methods. Uh, additionally, we have a procedural generation of content uh, where various uh, graphics or music or uh, even even full games could be generated by using uh, artificial intelligence techniques. And one, the third uh, uh, application domain in games for, for uh, hybrid artificial intelligence could be user profiling and analytics. Uh, since a lot of, uh, there are very, very big numbers of players, it uh, would be of course interesting, especially for companies that uh, develop uh, games to actually have some feedback from their, uh, from their players and how they use the game and uh, how they spend their money in the end to, to buy uh, additional content for the game and similar. And since artificial intelligence allows us to analyze uh, large data sets in, in various ways, I believe that uh, uh, this would be an excellent application domain. So uh, the main objective uh, of the project is to build a distributed orchestration platform for hybrid artificial intelligence for various types of games, including serious games and gamification. Uh, this uh, platform would be uh, similar to various other cloud-based uh, platforms, uh, which major companies uh, in artificial intelligence have already built, like Google or Microsoft and, and similar. Uh, but with the twist that it is, uh, that the main idea behind it is to foster game development. Game developers are uh, also programmers, of course, but a lot of uh, game developers are uh, artists, uh, not uh, necessarily um, uh, advanced in programming. Uh, so one of the ideas would be to use a more, more, more simplistic approach to, to using various uh, types of artificial intelligence methods. As a side quest to, to the main objective is to build a cool holographic game console. This is um, an additional thing that we would like to do in, in the project. And when I uh, talk about a holographic, holographic console, it's about more or less uh, holographic displays. Uh, here is uh, uh, an example of how this looks like. This 
observe this is a, a glass pyramid. Uh, the display shows images from four various sites, and when you uh, look at it, it uh, looks like it's a three dimensional, but it's photographic. So, I believe this technology is, is very uh, an interesting media for, for creating games. And uh, one of our uh, objectives would be to build, build a console uh, uh, based on this technology. Uh, so, um, so uh, besides building this, this uh, orchestration platform, we would like also to see if this uh, platform would actually work in, in four uh, use cases. The first use case is connected to massive multiplayer uh, online role-playing games based on a previous uh, Croatian Science uh, Foundation project, a model MMORPG that, that uh, we have at the end of this faculty, where we have uh, developed various uh, methods for uh, artificial uh, intelligence in massive multiplayer online role-playing games. Uh, as well as automatic testing procedures. So we used some previous work from that project to uh, test our, our uh, uh, orchestration platform. The second use case is uh, uh, related to gamification and virtual assistance based uh, on uh, Baritza. Baritza uh, is um, a virtual assistant at the Faculty of Organization and informatics that uh, the artificial intelligence laboratory has implemented and we might uh, uh, think about it how to use Baritza for example for uh, for various tasks in the in at our faculty and, and use uh, various artificial intelligence methods from our application platform to to make to put it to, uh, to good use and also IMAP book IMAP book is uh, uh, a gamification platform uh, developed by uh, one of our panelists, uh, Glenn, Glenn Smith. Uh, I believe he will say a few words later about IMAP book and how, how it might be related to what we are planning in our, in our project. Um, the third use case uh, is uh, related to a, a serious, uh, serious gaming. Uh, and if, uh, actually, what we would like uh, to build is um, a serious game related to autonomous vehicles. Um, this part uh, will be uh, related to something similar to like a testing platform for for autonomous vehicles, vehicles artificial intelligence, to see if uh, this artificial intelligence can. Uh, do what what is supposed to do, and in this uh, platform, we would like to use some of the orchestration orchestration uh, uh, platform and some uh, methods that have been implemented in there. And the fourth uh, use case is related to this whole game whole game console that we are about to build, uh, for which we would like to implement a special game that would be. It would be uh, exclusively uh, work, uh, exclusively uh, implemented for, for our whole game console and uh, use, of course, the station platform for various types of artificial intelligence that sh shall be included in this whole game platform. So, uh, a few words about our results so far. As I said, the, the project started in February. We had a pandemic and there are not uh, lots, lots of results that we, we hoped that we uh, would achieve, but some of the results were achieved. Um, actually, no, most of the results, the only part that isn't uh, achieved is related to this whole game platform since uh, uh, the building on the physical construction of the platform was, was delayed due to, due to the pandemic and lockdown. But here are some other results that uh, have been achieved so far. We developed a conceptual model uh, of the orchestration platform as a multi-agent system. So we have, uh, I will show uh, the, the conceptual model in, in uh, a minute or two. Uh, we have developed uh, a number of uh, proof of concept game engine interfaces uh, where we uh, show how various game engines can be connected to an uh, orchestration platform and how uh, various methods uh, from uh, an orchestration platform could be used inside inside uh, 
uh, such uh, game engines. Um, uh, for these two results, we have also uh, currently two papers uh, on, on, on the Central European Conference on uh, Information Intelligence Systems, uh, which will be tomorrow at the session at, uh, from the computer game session. So if you are interested, you can uh, uh, you can uh, see give more, more details about, about those tomorrow. Uh, also, we have developed a few proof of concept AI microservices and ideas of how to actually uh, create um, various uh, uh, more or less uh, 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 um, implemented artificial uh, intelligence methods. Uh, the basic idea uh, is to uh, implement microservice uh, 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 artificial intelligence methods in a way that can be used in multiple places. So it's not um, it's not uh, oriented towards only one application or one game, but that you can use them as components and then build uh, an artificial intelligence you like in in an orchestrated way. So uh, first, let me show the, uh, the conceptual model. It's a bit uh, complex, but uh, uh, I can uh, explain what, what it is about. So the main distributed orchestration platform is shown on this, on this uh, green, green, uh, uh, green rectangle. Uh, the Platform should be able. Uh, she is able it should be implemented in a way that, uh, as a multi-agent management system. For example, using Spade, you, you will uh, probably using the be using the uh, Smart Python agent development environment. Uh, three of the uh, people who are in the, uh, in the development of Spade are all three. Uh, panelists, so I believe they could say a few words about Spade uh, uh, during during this uh, panel. Uh, the one thing that we will implement uh, to uh, allow game engines to access uh, distributed orchestration platform will be various game engine APIs. Uh, we have already, as I said, created proof of concept uh, interfaces. We will extend those for a number of various uh, various uh, game engines. Uh, the communication between game engines and distributed organization platform could be in various ways, using web sockets, using a RESTful API or, or API, RESTful API or streams. Uh, also, in, in addition to this with the registration platform, we would like to uh, implement a web-based administration user interface, uh, more or less something like a multi-user cloud service where game develop developers can uh, orchestrate their methods that they need for, for a simple, simple for some, from some of the uh, games and then uh, stream them in a way as, as a service or a microservice through the platform. Uh, in the uh, background of the distributed orchestration platform, we would have a number of servers uh, which are insta uh, instated by, by the platform in a way as they are uh, so-called holons. Holons uh, are a uh, concept from multi-agent systems, which are um, uh, which are uh, agents that are able to uh, assume other agents, agents that are uh, organized within under other agents. Uh, in this way, we have servers that uh, can uh, manage uh, various types of agents, which will usually represent various types of, of uh, artificial intelligence methods. They should provide load balancing, service allocation, orchestration, uh, using, for example, Docker Swarm or, or Kubernetes or some system of, of orchestration. So these holons or these um, uh, servers that uh, are able to uh, provide uh, uh, the resources for, for, for these agents, for these methods that are uh, going to be be uh, orchestrated uh, are depicted down here. Uh, so the idea is to, uh, to have for each service, for each method, uh, an agent that can accept uh, value, uh, either single values or streams of data. 
and also outputs are also single value streams of data. Uh, in this way, we can connect those services in an orchestrated way, uh, in a way similar as uh, we would connect, for example, neural networks and the uh, various types of networks that are connected in deep, deep learning architectures, where always uh, the input is processed to a number of services and the output is then given back to, to the game or to the user or to the API that which, which uses it. Uh, a basic idea behind uh, how this should function is to use uh, Unix-like filter applications. So these are apps that uh, read the standard input and write the standard output, can have various arguments, uh, which are containerized, containerized, so inside the Docker or some other image we will probably use, be using Docker. Uh, in that way, uh, we can uh, create a pipeline of, of services where the output from one is uh, the input for an app. Okay, uh, a few words about the, the other part where we have created the interface. As I said, we will, tomorrow is a session where you can uh, hear about this, these um, interfaces that we created. We created four interfaces for now, more to come for the RPG Maker and V, Dodo, uh, the uh, App uh, Blender game engine, and RanPy, which are four. Uh, various engines, uh, uh, Blender uh, is a 3D, 3D um, game engine, uh, Godot is a, a multi uh, 3D and 2D uh, game engine, RPG Maker is a, is a special game engine for RPG games, and RenPy is, a, is a, 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 a platform for interactive novels. Uh, okay, this would be uh, what, what uh, is, is uh, about my pre introduction presentation. It was a bit longer than I, than I uh, actually planned, but okay, we have still a lot of time to, to, uh, to talk about some aspects of, uh, of uh, our project with, with the panelists. So, uh, I would like now to uh, ask the panelists if they could uh, uh, start their, their cameras and, and uh, so we could maybe uh, start a little discussion about about uh, some of the aspects of the of the project. So uh, I have prepared a number of questions, but of course, uh, if any of you has additional ideas or additional topics that you would like to talk about, you are of course welcome. And also the the um, the uh, uh, participants can ask some questions on 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 the chat. Uh, so uh, our first question uh, would be um, uh, yeah, first question I would like to ask Glenn about about uh, his his uh, system uh, gamification system uh, IMAP book. Uh, can you give us a short introduction about IMAP book, what it is, and what what uh, the basic idea is behind it? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Um, IMAP book is an interactive ebook system. So uh, the the basic model is that you read read some pages. Well, let me back up a little bit. There's a literacy crisis in the Western world. Uh, Kids, teenagers, even adults are reading less than they used to recreationally. And because of that, their literacy skills have declined a lot. So that's definitely a, a problem. While at the same time, games and social media have increased in their popularity. So uh, I hypothesize or we hypothesize that there's a relationship between that. So uh, the IMAP book is an attempt uh, and an exploration of integrating game interaction and social interaction into the book technology. So the initial model was you read some pages of text and come to a game that can only be won by having comprehended certain key elements of what you just read. And then after winning the game, you move on. More recently, we've added um, social interaction in the form of uh, small group discussions. Um, and uh, as far as, so yeah, 
we've done some studies in a number of countries in China, the Netherlands, the United States, uh, Slovenia. Um, hey, David. Um, and let's see. Um, in terms of the relationship to this project, we're interested in the idea of being able to make the transition from smaller data sets to larger data sets. So one of the things that attracts me, attracts me about this OHI project is this, this idea of a hybrid artificial intelligence that you start, well, in our case, we would start with a symbolic model um, because we might have a small data set. And then as we gathered more data through users interacting with a particular ebook, we might add a statistical element to it. Um, and in particular, we're interested in natural language processing. I do see a question from David Tai. Um, yeah, I think I just actually yeah, you just answered, answered this question. question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, but we have, uh, yeah, IMAP book has been relatively successful. As I said, we, we've been in about uh, five different countries and published a lot of papers. Uh, one of the things that we're interested in is how do you, uh, teachers and educators often don't have the kind of resources that uh, game design companies have, or even uh, college faculty, university faculty who have grants. I had a NSF grant where we created uh, computer games and interactive eBooks for climate change science education, but uh, your average teachers and educators don't have those kind of resources to throw throw at things. So I'm very interested in the idea of of, a, of how you can start with low tech models, uh, small data sets, and move to bigger data sets so that uh, tools, gamification tools, can be put into more hands. Uh, uh, it's all well and good to have beautiful systems that can be created with, with budgets of millions of dollars and teams of people. Um, but when for tools to really take off, you need to, it really helps at least if you can um, make it some level of simple production available to, to a wider number of people with fewer skills and resources. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Nice, thank you very much. And so, uh, what I, I was, uh, I, the question that David uh, asked was, was also a question that I wanted to ask. Uh, but yes, definitely, one of, of the ideas also that I think would be quite interesting would be to include something like, as you said, natural language processing, where we could get, have some kind of virtual assistant or something like that. I think I'm a book that could, for example, uh, 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 put those, uh, should, should say to students what they should do or, or try to, uh, in a way, uh, foster discussion or, or some, some. Right. Way. Well, we're, we're, uh, the use of natural language processing, the, the first thing that, first we started with uh, answering, automated answering of open-ended questions within the ebooks. And I worked with uh, Professor Slavko Zitnik and at University of Ljubljana about that. Um, the next thing that we moved to was the idea that um, of taking small group discussion data and um, and uh, we had human people. I mean, all people are human, aren't they? But you know, I'm just being a little bit redundant there. We had people qualitative, quali qualitatively code this discussion data, for example, along multiple dimensions. For example, um, was a posting that a four year old, uh, sorry, a fourth grader made in a discussion on task or off task, related to the book that they're reading or not? So we took that coded data and then, um, and then we, um, we had uh, students in a natural language processing course uh, in teams try to create NLP algorithms to predict those types of codings. 
now on. So if you could, it's one thing to do that with coded data, but if you know, as the system expanded and the algorithms got better, you might be able to do some of this on the fly. Uh, the other thing that I'm, I'm interested in is, uh, let's see, is the idea of conversations with characters in stories. So now we're kind of doing it with a, a, a sort of simple matching algorithms, uh, but it would be great to be able to uh, take a text and sort of uh, mine relationships from it and use that to kind of automatically generate uh, some of these games and interactions. So for example, you talked about earlier about procedural generation of content that would be related to that. Let's see what uh, Josip uh, had to say here. Can the IMAP book, and if yes, in which way help some social or psychological researchers uh, collecting user data produced from interaction with IMAP book. Uh, absolutely, that's actually the best aspect of IMAP book is that the everything that the people that interact with the with the system it generates data, and it's a great as a research tool. So, for example, in these uh, as people are interacting with these, we have kind of. Uh, game-like conversations with characters in the book. You can easily download that data and look at it and analyze it. Similarly with the small group discussions. So uh, yes, that's really the biggest strength of IMAP book is any kind of research that you're doing where you want people to be interacting in a kind of a text-based way. Um, it's great for, um, for getting data and, and then you can code it or, or just uh, numerically or quantitatively analyze it. Um, somewhere around, um, I don't know, six or seven people have used IMAP book for their dissertation research. Um, and I also forgot to remember to uh, mention that we've had a couple of studies in Saudi Arabia and the IMAP book, I'm sorry to, I don't mean to sound like an advertisement here, but <laughs> IMAP book, it's very easy to change the interface so that it is in a different language. So we, we have different, uh, by just modifying one file with the interface commands, we have versions that are in Chinese, uh, recently added an Arabic version, uh, et cetera. Anyway, so if, uh, yeah, very interested in, uh, working with uh, social and psychological researchers. So thanks for the question, Josip. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there was also another uh, question from Lucas from, from the beginning. Uh, uh, he said that, so the idea of is that uh, the artificial intelligence would be on some sort of cloud accessible to developers and game creators. Uh, so if it uh, can be applied to using autonomous vehicles, how safe would be such uh, things stored on a cloud? Uh, I agree. So the idea is not to use uh, this uh, uh, orchestration platform for for actual uh, autonomous vehicles. It's for a simulation platform. It's for a, a simulation environment where we can test various methods to see how they work. Of course, if you uh, depending on on yeah, of the current producers of, of uh, autonomous vehicles, there are various approaches, but there should be a num uh, more or less a, a basic system on on the vehicle if there's no no network or something like that. So I believe that if you're going to use some kind of autonomous vehicles, you, you should have uh, some uh, 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 some of the AI on on the actual vehicle. But also, it's, uh, the question is, uh, can we store all these uh, methods on the vehicle or not? Uh, we use quite some intensive methods, uh, some methods that uh, need a lot of memory, a lot of uh, uh, computational power. So that's a trade-off, in a way, a risk trade-off. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered the question, but it is not it is not 100% safe, definitely. So, but it's probably a necessity due to various hardware and software uh, constraints. 
Okay, uh, let me move on to, to our other uh, panelists. Marcus, Marcus, yes. sorry. Yes. Yes. May, may I introduce something for the first question? Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, okay. Uh, yes, just to say that another uh, um, solution to this problem of, of privacy, because it's a problem of privacy that of the data and the quantity of the data is another line in, in, in artificial intelligence that is age AI. You have the computation in the, in the age, not in the cloud. So you can um, uh, uh, obtain the data Collect the data, uh, analyze the data in the in the in the age in the vehicle or in the uh, device that is capturing the data, and then you only pass the the classification, the prediction, or the um, uh, in this case um, uh, data more more sophisticated data to the cloud. So only this data is passed to, to the cloud. You have uh, in this case. Uh, uh, solve the problem of privacy, maybe, okay? Not, not in all the cases. And uh, uh, of course, you, you, you solve the problem of the quantity of data, okay? Yeah, just, uh, just I want to say this, uh, this aspect, to clarify. Okay, so, uh, could, Marcus, could I just add one brief note yeah, of of point on that? So, uh, of course, uh, it's more it's in terms of safety, most of the processing has to be on the vehicle, but already uh, there is some advantages to be gained by having your, your car access data from the cloud. If you think about the, on your phone, how it predicts uh, um, where the traffic jams are coming up ahead, it's probably just drawing data from people's smartphones to do that. Uh, so the safest would be, I think, to have most of the processing locally on the, in, in the car, but it, it adds a level of safety to also access data from the cloud from, for example, from other cars through, now it's through smartphones, but later on it might be through the, the, the more sophisticated computers and algorithms on the car. Anyway, I just wanted to add that. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe Jaime uh, would have something to say about that since he is, is the, the autonomous car expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello. Thank you, Marcus, for the invitation to this panel. So I think so that uh, at this moment, the artificial intelligence has down to a very low level, yes, in which we can't introduce a, a new devices in which we have an artificial intelligence and machine learning. An example is one of these devices in which we have a uh, machine uh, imagine processing classification and so on as a said Vicente Julian here we can um, embed the different machine learning model in this kind of devices and reduce the, the the time to to send the information or to send the data to the cloud and reduce this 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 application so and at the same time in, in an hybrid artificial intelligence, it is another topic because in this case, we can distribute the artificial intelligence in the low level, in, in the most low level. Because at this moment, we can found uh, billions, billions of IoT devices that can be used on artificial intelligence. So if we have a, this, uh, this type of devices that has uh, different sensors, yes, uh, can get the information to the real world and classify it. And at the same time, we can send this, this data to the cloud to increase our data set or create a, a better models and so on. So I think so that the future of the artificial intelligence is a low level. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, there's another uh, question in the chat here. So from Tomislav, uh, he said, yeah, but with that, data on cloud, wouldn't it be possible to take the data so the car goes with different routes? It is also possible now. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, you have to have uh, confidence in, in your application. Uh, if you use maps, uh, Google Maps, for example, uh, it would be possible, and I, I haven't tried it, of course, uh, to use, uh, uh, to in a way fake your data, but it depends uh, on the number of users. 
for example, for uh, Google Maps, we use a lot of data to, as, as I think Glenn said, they predict uh, traffic jams and so on. I, I hope anonymously, <laughs> the location data of various devices. And if you have uh, millions and uh, billions of such devices, uh, if one fakes it, uh, nothing will happen because the, the, this is just a, a statistical error. But if such, if one such, uh, if there's less devices, yes, you can fake it. And of course, something like uh, you do not want to happen could happen. Okay, uh, let's move on uh, from from autonomous vehicles. Uh, one, one interesting uh, aspect, of course, would be uh, related to spade. And uh, if I remember correctly, Carlos told me they made a game with spade uh, for, for teaching and uh, capture the flag. Uh, could you say a few words about that? Uh, you need to unmute. unmute. <laughs> okay. I was, I was muted. Uh, I was saying that thank you for inviting me and uh, good afternoon. And uh, uh, yes, uh, I think that this, uh, in all this uh, stuff related to, to multi-agent games and uh, multi-agent systems and uh, massive games, uh, one uh, thing that we made in, uh, in Valencia some time ago, and uh, it was so interesting that we are still using it, is uh, yes, uh, Another kind of proof of concept, as, uh, as you uh, presented some of them, we made a proof of concept of uh, implementing a, a, a game using multi-agent systems. Uh, we have uh, our own uh, uh, kind of uh, multi-agent system that is uh, Spade Agents, and we just implemented it as a, 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 a capture the flat kind of game where uh, everything is, uh, is implemented as an agent in this kind of multi-agent system. So we have the soldiers that are uh, in each team, they are all agents or they are spade agents, but we also have the, the infrastructure of the game, uh, for instance, the, the environment and uh, the one that, the, that the decides if you can move or not, uh, that uh, manages the, 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 the map or manages the, the different suits in the in the game, the life of the of the agents, as if the goals are pursued of, or not, it's also implemented as uh, as agents in in this uh, in this idea. So uh, uh, we have uh, uh, made uh, uh, this this kind of proof of concept, uh, and we have tested it with uh, uh, forty or fifty uh, agents uh, playing in this uh, in this kind of game. And it was so interesting that we we are using it uh, for educational in uh, uh, purposes in uh, in our uh, universities. So we have uh, the, these students just learning how all these ideas of multi-agent systems work, just playing uh, mm -hmm. uh, this this kind of game. And uh, the idea is that uh, we have also tried to uh, make some. Uh, uh, experiments uh, using this kind of game as, for instance, uh, trying to include humans inside the, the environment. So trying to mix uh, uh, NPCs with, with uh, human players, uh, human players that play for a, a, a soldier or human players that uh, make some kind of strategies in the, in the game. Right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's also reason you, you have sent me that I still haven't had the time to try it out, but I, I'm looking forward to try it out and see if my students in my multi agent system course will <laughs> try to play that. Uh, as you said, including uh, human players is an interesting part. Uh, what about communication between agents and, and humans? Um, would that be possible or, or would it be only in interaction with, with, with uh, truly game or to the game game? Well, the, the idea is that the, our agents are using for uh, communicate, they, they use XMPP uh, mm -hmm. uh, messages uh, uh, through, through this uh, uh, protocol. So uh, 
in fact, uh, uh, you can uh, connect to, to this and, uh, and send uh, messages, uh, taking into account the format that the, that the agents are going to, to interact uh, with these kind of messages. And uh, in one of the previous versions that we have of the game, we make some uh, uh, agent that was uh, some kind of wrapper of the, of the human, so the human could interact inside one of these uh, soldiers, uh, uh, one of these agents, and could send messages to other agents just for asking for ammo, just for asking uh, the agents to follow him or, uh, or uh, asking for, uh, for some kind of health or, or something like that. And the, the, the fact was that the, the, what we, we made is uh, translate this uh, uh, input that we have from the, from the human in the, in the keyboard. We translate it to messages in the format that the agents were expecting it. So when an agent receives one of these messages, it was in some kind, uh, it, it didn't know if it was a message for another agent or, uh, or was from a human. And it was uh, some kind of uh, interesting way of uh, immersion in the, in the game. Yeah, that, that, that I believe. Uh, we, we tried something similar a uh, time ago on the, other, on the other project, which I mentioned. Uh, the idea was to use uh, some kind of NLP from, for, for our uh, uh, agents that bought their bots actually playing the game. Uh, to see if the humans would uh, make, or if they would make the Turing test, but it didn't work well. <laughs> Not on the first try. <laughs> but uh, that might be also an interesting idea to think about some NLP or something to uh, process some message from, from a human player and then uh, if it is relevant to other uh, agents to, to forward the structure where they using the same or gender or something like that. Yeah, Marcus, yeah. so I think so that in, in regarding to the to this topic, then how can you interact the human with the, the real human with the virtual agents or create, as Carlos says, uh, an agent that can be live in the virtual world, but the human control this agent. So I think so that the HI is one of the most interesting artificial intelligence application because first it's very cheaper. Yes, you can buy, uh, I don't know, for $10 or $20 switch devices. And in most of these devices, we have a uh, accelerometer, gyroscope, and you can introduce this, these sensors in our body, yes, or in, in our wear. And then we can replicate the movement and we can say, okay, well, I, Take into account you are a general in the game that the Carlos was told, and you can give order using the hand movement, and you can uh, move your troop, move your, your your army in a different uh, uh, strategies to to win. So I think so that it, using the HI we can uh, recognize the the movement, yeah, using the accelerometer, and at the same time with Introducing this artificial intelligence, we can create a hybrid uh, artificial intelligence in in a serious game. Because, for example, if you want to try to train a firefighter, sometimes you need to acquire the uh, physiological signals of the of the firefighter, uh, ECG, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, SpO2, or uh, 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 breath frequency or so on. So uh, you can introduce this, this kind of sensor or with this kinds of, of devices in the body of the firefighter. And then you can introduce this information to the serious game. At the same time, the serious game can respond according to this information and or try to, to put the, the, the simulation more soft or get more uh, more, more harder and give more uh, information to know how can respond this firefighter in a specific scenario. Mm. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, let's move a little bit on uh, related to one part that uh, uh, relates to our project uh, regarding uh, the conceptual model that we have shown 
So multi-edge assistance seems to be a quite a, a form of good uh, methodology to implement distributed intelligence systems. Uh, what is your opinion on using multi-edge assistance as, as a methodology for implementing the complex artificial intelligence systems for games? Anyone so who, who would like to... to uh, <laughs> Well, it, okay. yeah, uh, in my opinion, uh, absolutely yes. Um, yes, uh, multi agent systems is, uh, from uh, artificial intelligence perspective, the the only for me the only way to design this kind of of, of systems. It uh, fits perfectly because uh, you have in a game actors. The actors are playing in the, in the game. They interact. Uh, among uh, them, uh, between, between them, and they have a goal to, to, to do something uh, in the game. They play, they pass from different scenes, making different tasks, and these uh, things that uh, fits perfectly with a video game is more or less the definition of a multi agent system. We have uh, players that are the, the, the agents, we have uh, actions to do. We need to choose which is the best action. We need to decide. We, we need decision-making processes. And then we have uh, uh, maybe individual goals or collective goals. All of these aspects are covered by multi agent systems from a different perspective. So in my opinion, it's, it's, it's the perfect way to design. We need to, to integrate other techniques, of course, uh, take, talking about uh, hybrid artificial intelligence, we need to integrate how to uh, decide uh, to, to do something, maybe using uh, machine learning techniques, okay, in order to classify or to predict something is, 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 uh, is uh, necessary. And uh, the most important thing in this, in this case, we are, we are uh, more or less um, uh, more interested in video games where we have different players playing uh, simultaneously. So we need to uh, uh, offer techniques to interact this this person to decide what what to do in a collective way. So in this case, for me, and this is my opinion, obviously, because I am working in this in this area for different for a lot for a lot for a long time. Okay, uh, <laughs> is 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 a, a perfect way to to design this kind of this kind of of, of systems. Okay? Okay, great. Yeah, that, that, is, that is my opinion. Also. It's, uh, yes, you, you have more or less a smart uh, uh, distributed system, and this is more or less the definition of, of uh, modulation systems. I believe this, this might be a very, very good way of doing it. Another thing that um, we have uh, here, that was a problem, more problem, or a, and a challenge is. Uh, lots of, uh, especially machine learning techniques, are, are quite computationally expensive. And uh, if you have a computer game, usually a lot of uh, players like it when the game uh, uh, yeah, flies. <laughs> so it must be fast, it must be responsive. And if you include such methods, um, uh, what, what is your opinion on that? Should we, uh, what, what is, what is uh, better or, or maybe that's the wrong word. What is a good solution to, uh, on one hand, you have the need for responsiveness, and on the other hand, you have the need for a lot of computational resources for, for machine learning. Uh, is it better to, to put it on the device or console or computer where the user uh, uh, has the method and, and it's, it's uh, the edge in a way? Or, or use it in the cloud and uh, have a vast uh, server infrastructure that, that does it and maybe give, give feedback uh, in a faster or slower way. Just, just another, another part that came to mind. There is a problem with, with lots of games. Uh, usually there are multiplayer games, which was games that are first designed for single player, but also have a multiplayer part. And usually the single player is so optimized to play it uh, responsibly. It's, it's, it's great experience in terms of graphics. And when you come to the problem of a multiplayer, 
uh, you have the network in the middle. So the transfer of, of um, actions of the various players that can be slow and you have the lag and you have a problem that you don't see the response at the exact same moment it happens. So uh, what is your opinion on that? What is, what is good or better or is there, are there different cases where we should use uh, the uh, machine learning on board on, on the, the actual uh, uh, device or in the cloud? And as an opinion. <laughs> Well, in, in my opinion, in, in the two, in the in the low level and in the in the cloud, in the two, you need depends on what you need to do, but probably you need to to do something in the in the low level because you don't need more information than your own information, and that's all to decide something. But probably you need more information from other players for other uh, things in the system. And then you need to, to go to the cloud and to put the, the decision process in the cloud. And then you need to put the, the, the machine learning technique in this you case. To to the and there, yeah, and probably the, the, the input on the cloud, on the machine learning technique in the cloud, is the output of the uh, prediction or classification made in the, in the low level. Probably not, yes. It's, this is, could be maybe a, a, a way, a, a, as a way to. to to do more complex services using information that is not uh, uh, raw information, is, is information that has been processed and that has been reduced and then you can use in the cloud. But it depends on the gain, depends in the domain, uh, obviously. But probably in the two level, you, you can maintain this kind of, 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 um, of techniques uh, and this is the best option, it depends. My, my, at, at the end, my response is depends. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and in the other way, it's, it's interesting to have a game or, or, or a system that has its, its uh, in, in a sense, it, it has its own life independently of how you interact with it. Uh, for instance, in the, in the project, uh, uh, you have this, this uh, uh, proof about the holographic uh, interaction. But uh, uh, not all the users that are interacting with the game will have this uh, holographic interface. So depending on the device that they have and the, the possibilities of the device, they have a set of uh, uh, interface uh, 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 services available to them. So the, the same game for different users, depending on the way that they can interact with it, it can seem a very different uh, game and a very different application. You may have a, a, a suitor, uh, for, for instance, for a, 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 a user that have this holographic and this uh, amazing uh, interface with high level graphics. And uh, on the other hand, you may have a, a 2D interface for a, a, a low tech uh, device and a, a, a user that, that sees the game as a, a strategic one. Mm -hmm. And it's the same uh, engine and it's the same uh, uh, game, but the users are, are interacting with it in a very different way. It's a great, great idea, yeah, that, that, that's a very interesting concept. So yeah. yeah, I think, but sorry, so in my opinion, I think so that the lack that the Marcus told is, it could be that will be solved with the 5G generation of telecommunication. We yes. suppose that the 5G solved this problem of, of the lag because if you can see the the new Samsung Galaxy Tab 20, you can play an, an Xbox Live using 5G. So, but I think so that as the same as Vicente told, um, I think so that it's necessary the both. We need your cloud and we need the smartphone or the edge to play and the, I think so that in the future, the cloud is only used to communicate information between the different players. But the most powerful part of the video games has been located inside of the smartphone or in the, I don't know, in the mobile video games or something like that. Uh, I don't know, so it's, 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 it's my opinion about this. Okay, yeah, th thank you, of course. Yeah, 5G is, is an interesting idea, but uh, uh, yeah, 
definitely. But uh, I can imagine that in the first moment 5G comes out, there comes a game that is you know, uh, using more resources in the network to, <laughs> to be slow, and, <laughs> as it always was. So and, and, and something uh, got better, better processor, better graphic card, and so on. There came also uh, more complex games and more complex complex. Games. Okay, uh, all right. Another uh, interesting question that we haven't had uh, before is uh, related to advancements in, in artificial intelligence. In recent years, we have seen a lot of interesting uh, application domains, especially in computer vision and in, in data analysis and, and so on. And uh, do you have uh, any opinion on what of these methods would be very interesting for computer users? In, in, in what what aspects? Hmm. One thing that I, that I saw, uh, if you have seen the invitation, uh, deep fakes are, are something that, that, that seems to be quite an interesting thing to do. Uh, I've seen uh, various uh, possibilities where, where they use persons which, which are either on um, classic images, classic portraits, and so on, and make them uh, alive from the Mona Lisa and so on, and they started talking and moving their head and so on. I think that that's quite an interesting medium. But there are, of course, other, other possibilities. So is, uh, do you have any opinion on that? Maybe that would be something to I'm not good. To include a character that that can talk to uh, the students uh, using using some some kind of uh, deep fake method or something like that. No opinion. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let me well, then... Marcus, one of the visions we had with the IMAP book system is that the characters in the book actually talk with the people that are reading the book. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so that's that's part that's of our vision. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I mentioned it. Uh, since there, there are uh, quite interesting uh, applications already, like uh, uh, motion capture and, and um, uh, no, I can't remember the name of the application, right. Crazy Talk, Crazy Talk, for example, oh. where you can animate characters just from their skill image. And right. that would be um, an interesting possibility for, for uh, IMAP. Yeah, I also wanted to make a comment about the, a completely different note about the um, holographic display. Um, and actually, I, I mentioned this point in our kickoff meeting uh, in, in a, a time long ago, you know, when everything in the yeah. world seemed the pandemic and the world changed, yes. But um, one of the panelists, uh, one of my, and I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot which one said it, was talking about 10 to $20 wearable devices with gyroscopes and that kind of thing. In my opinion, the holographic display with its, which is sort of pseudo 3D, it, it borders on being 3D. In my opinion, the usefulness of the holographic display is only going to come into play, um, and that rhymes, display with play. Mm -hmm. it, the holographic display is only going to be really useful when you can also combine it with, with the sort of uh, 3D sensing, uh, wearable 3D sensing devices. So you've got your display and the, the, the game player can move his hand and interact with the display in, in some way. And, um, so I, I know there are a lot of technical difficulties with that, um, but in that sense, the, the pyramid glass structure is, 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 in my opinion, not ideal, but I would like to put it out there that when we can get to the point where the, somebody is able to, through wearable device, interact with the 3D holographic display, then you start seeing some very exciting things. I think it, it would be impossible. It would be impossible this, uh, just by using various, not in the end, cameras or, or simple motion devices. You could uh, do interaction without a variable device. 
you just by, by when you when someone goes by the, the, the console, if it has sensors and of course the, the software necessary to, to recognize various gestures or, or something with your head or something like that, you could interact with the game or anything that is on it. So I think this is quite a good idea and something that, that could be quite, quite interesting. Maybe maybe Jaime has something. To, uh, yes, 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 because I, I, I am searching Google because I remember that two or three months ago, I was a news in which we can, you, the, the user now can interact with the video games using mm -hmm. a an, an special glove, yeah? In which you have a different motors and this uh, different engines, and these engines can control the movement of your hand. Mm -hmm. And if you in the virtual world you use you you, you take this this object, you uh, constrain the, the movement in the real world. So mm -hmm. if this is the, the 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 object in the virtual world, the my fingers only can can move or can grip only in this position, but this using a, a, a different engine that you had in the gloves and, and an interaction with the with the virtual world. So I uh, search in Google, but I, can, I don't know, remember which is the name, but it's, it's a very interesting. Yeah. And I think so that in the future, we, we can use this. And at the same time, uh, I don't know, remember this uh, UK company in which you can buy a on a, a special dress, I don't know, remember, yeah. And this 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 device has a different sensors and at the same time have an actuators. And if you are playing a shooter video games, you can feel the the right. shot, the yeah. impact in your body because you use a on a different engines or something like that. Yeah. There, but yeah, yeah, I've seen some, some, something similar to that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yes, that's that's also an interesting, interesting aspect. All right, so we're uh, in the last fifteen minutes of our panel. Uh, I would like now to ask uh, the participants if they have any uh, additional questions or, or things they would like like to hear hear more uh, from us. Maybe they sleep. I think we've exhausted them. Yeah, probably. We, we, we spoke too much, definitely too much. Okay, then, if there are no uh, additional questions, I will then uh, close this, this panel. I would like. Thank you all, all, all very Wait a minute, there's one question there. Let's hey, see. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see. Um, question about IMAP book. How could it be connected to existing social networks? Uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, let me think about that for a second. Um, ooh, um, you know, I haven't, at the, at the moment, it's, or up till now, it's been a closed system. And part of the reason for that is, is that um, in schools, there's a lot of security concerns. So uh, we currently, and up till now, we've had, you have to have a log and a, pa and a password to get in there. Um, there is a great deal of concern, especially in the United States about security issues in schools. Um, so this is, conceived of uh, as, as something that can be used in school, schools and has been. That being said, um, it would in theory be possible to integrate it with some existing uh, social networks. Um, so um, one, th one way that it could be done is, is, is doing more with the, um, with, kind of other multimedia aspects of it. We, you, we can integrate uh, images, uh, other types of computer games can be imported into it. Um, and uh, maybe the way to do this would be to allow 
certain portions of IMAC book to be exported into an externalized form. So even um, some uh, discussion or, or, or some sort of game interaction, we could set it up so that, it, that certain portions of the interaction could be exported. So it would be sort of like um, um, uh, videos, YouTube videos that show people playing games that, and they're narrating over it or something like that. I mean, the, the, the problem here with integrating with existing social networks is to maintain that uh, security aspect of IMAP book because we have, uh, you know, we, for example, in Slovenia, we had fourth graders, kids uh, 10, 11 and 12 uh, having discussions in within the IMAP book. So you've got definitely got serious security concerns. So you'd have to get uh, permission for everybody that was involved, but uh, that's an excellent question. Um, I like the question, and um, I would say that probably the easiest way to do it would be to facilitate some sort of exporting of the of the uh, interaction or the or the experience. So yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right, so if there aren't any additional questions, I would like to close this panel discussion one more time. Thank you all for very, very, very much for agreeing to, to being part of this. It was, I think, an interesting discussion. Uh, and yes, uh, everyone, uh, uh, not sure what the next, next uh, uh, section is, but uh, I would like to say goodbye to, to everyone of you, and I hope we have some chance to uh, collaborate in the future. And I'll take this moment to make some self promotion since I see a lot of uh, students here from, from various courses. If any one of you is interested in joining the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory or regarding this project, Okay for Games, please contact me or, or someone from the project. Uh, uh, for Bogdan, for uh, Igor Tomicic, I'm also part of this. So, uh, if you had uh, any additional questions or something like that, please do let us know. Okay, one more time. Thank you, everyone, and see you hopefully one time in, in real person. So, and this all this madness is, is goodbye. Okay, thank you to you, Marco. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus, for organizing this. It's been great. And great questions from the audience. This has been wonderful. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.